James, what are three things every filmmaker must watch or read? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, well, I'm biased because my favorite film of all time is Network. I think everyone should watch Network. Uh, and there's a couple of different reasons why they should watch Network. The first of which is it's a brilliant screenplay. It's perhaps the greatest piece of film writing ever done. Patty Chavieski's screenplay uh, is not only astute and prophetic, but it's also hilarious. It had this vision of what the future could look like, and if you look at today's media landscape, indeed, most everything he wrote about in that film has come to pass. Uh, but it also did it in a way that was sharp and astute and really character-driven. I think people should watch that for those reasons, the overarching themes, but also how he developed his characters. Sidney Lumet, one of the things that not everyone knows about him is that in his early career he started in television, live television, and in those days in the 50s, of course, there were three cameras, maybe four, and when they had to switch lenses, they didn't have a zoom lens, so they'd use primes. And by having that experience in his toolkit, when he got older and started making his films, he could instantly tell you what kind of scene needed what kind of lens without ever seeing the lens, because he already had that in his visual memory. And that's another reason people should watch Network, because it is blocked and framed in such a specific way that's motivated by character and motivated by performance that every filmmaker should see why that works because then they would think more about what they do in their own work. It's not just about throwing the camera and shooting a scene, it's about thinking about how does the camera motivate the performance because that should be your first job as a director and that you have to do in tandem with your DP. So watch Network. The second thing you should do is start reading some showbiz biographies. I don't believe in reading film books. Uh, I've read a lot of film books, but if you're aspiring to read film books, I don't know if that tells you anything. It tells you about mechanics, it tells you about structure, but honestly I think all of us are programmed with a idea of what film structure is because we watch movies, we watch television shows. So instead of reading about it, read about other people's journeys and how they got to the place that they've arrived at. Uh, I think that's really important, and there's a plethora of those you can read. You don't have to pick one in particular, although, again, I'm partial to Sidney Lumet's making movies. Third thing you should do, and this is the thing that I think a lot of people overlook, and this is also reading, read showbiz trade publications and books about show business. Because as a filmmaker, if you want to be a working professional, you're gonna be working within the framework of the film and entertainment industry. If you don't understand what executive has worked at what company and where they're moving to and what their history is, you may have a very hard time when you sit down with that executive if you can't engage them on some of those things and understanding some of those, those issues. For example, um, in 2010 I was at the National Film Festival for Talented Youth with my film Followed. It's the largest uh, film festival in the world for people under 23 and Dana Brunetti was there and all these fantastic producers and I made a good impression with the chairman of the CW Network. Uh, at the time, I didn't know he was the chairman of the CW Network, but he invited me to uh, their uh, upfront presentation in New York, and I graduated from college the week after, so it was a crazy, crazy time. And when I got to the CW after party, I found out that I was the only person there that was not with the network, and Tom Sherman walks up and, and shakes my hand. He's like, hey, I heard about you were here. And I knew Tom Sherman because I knew my showbiz history. He was the executive that developed Lost, Desperate Housewives, Grey's Anatomy. He was a huge, huge figure in television. And he happened to be working now for the CW. And so I could talk to him about those things, to say, you know, I love Lost, I love what you did with that. And then years later, when I'm reading the book Disney War, I get to have more insight as to the behind the scenes machinations of what went on. And so I think that that's something you should do because you need to understand the breadth of it. It's not just about the creative, it's just also about the business. And you've got to put those two things together. So watch Network read some entertainment biographies, and read the trades, and read books about what happens in the business. 
I think what's also interesting is on a lot of these entertainment biographies, there's a stall, an mm -hmm. iceberg that happens in a lot of these careers, and then usually there's a resurgence from there. And I think that's important too, that people realize that it's not just like, oh, just climbing up and then it's all happy-go-lucky. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of things that there's pause for reflection. And yes, and it's, it's constantly about reinventing yourself and reevaluating your career. And I think that when you read and, and have mentors, it's not just about reading entertainment biographies. I also think it's important to surround yourself with experienced entertainment mentors that can help guide your career. Uh, you learn about those roadblocks and you learn how to get pass them and move through them. Uh, that's not to say that someone else's roadblock is something that you're also going to go through, but you might take something from that that can help within your own, because I do believe that everyone's journey is very unique. Uh, there is no clear-cut way to make it in entertainment. There is no way to get into the business. Everyone has a different story and a different path. Uh, but when you surround yourself with people and when you read things that give you insight before you actually meet those people, then you too can figure out how to advance your career.